Hey guys, I'm gonna go over chapter 618 today, and the lore keeps getting better and better every single chapter, man. Holy crap. We start this chapter off with Adwan being Chad, pretty much. He's talking to these girls, he's telling them all these stories about how he saved them and all the monsters he had to face. And Yeon Ring is like, there goes Adwan again, trying to pick up the girls. And meanwhile, Tramrai is in his room, like he's all like scrunched up and he gets information that Jihad won't be able to show up. So yeah, like I said, Jihad is not gonna put Tramrai as a priority. He is gonna continue ruling the tower. And I mean, even though it's Tramrai, like Tramrai looks up to him and Tramrai is uh, fully supportive of what he does. It doesn't matter. Jihad is gonna put the priority of the tower first. So Tramrai is disappointed, but he gets up and he gets out and like Enkidu follows him. And then he goes and meets up with his friends and they're like really happy to see him. And then Edouan is like, Tramarai, it's been a long time and you have your pet with you. And Enkidu gets all nervous. He's like bowing down and like saying, oh my God, I'm so, uh, nice to meet you, Lord Edouan and the Lord everyone there. And yeah, so Edouan is kind of like playing around with him, like saying that Tramarai is kind of annoying and all that. And then Tramarai just pretty much ends all of it by saying, hey, I need space to talk to these guys. And Enkidu is like, oh yeah, I know, I, I noticed you guys haven't talked to each other in a while, so I'll be leaving now. And then they just like turn their backs on Enkidu and like they just start like bantering. They, ju they just start having like casual conversations like, oh, Tramurai, you're talking to like a regular person. I never would have expected that from you. And like, oh, I would have been surprised if, uh, what's her name, Amy Hughes had a tail. Like, you know, ca just casual banter, just funny stuff. And Enkidu is over here. He's pretty fucking upset. He's... Now, this time he didn't take it too lightly. And now Enkidu is barely noticing that he will never be as close of a friend of Tramurai as these guys are unless he could travel back in time. So before Enkidu thought that with enough time that he could earn Tramurai's trust and he could stand on that same level, but he's now seeing that that will never happen. Now Enkidu is having these devious thoughts of taking over their bodies and usurping his spot to being Tramurai's best friend, or at least to be on that level of Tramurai's friendship. So. I mean, that's kind of fucked up, but I gotta give it to Enkidu. I mean, this guy is really dedicated to being Tramurai's top friend. Enkidu is also saying that this is gonna go unnoticed, but I mean, Enkidu, that's extremely hard, dude. You're gonna have to act like a whole different person. Like, just because you take over a person's body doesn't mean you can act the same as them. So something's gonna be off, so. I don't know Enkidu, it's just playing a fire at this point. And that's why in the next few scenes, Enkidu's telling us like what he learned about the family leader. So Enkidu, man, he is really learning about these guys. Um, he's really smart. This guy is smart. He's learning how to act like them. He's learning little tidbits about them and what their personalities are like so he can imitate them if he takes over their bodies. So he found out that Yeon Lee Rang is like a very beautiful person, I mean, appearance wise. And I mean, I guess anyone can find that out just by looking at her. But he also found out that she's kind of scary, which I mean, kind of makes sense. She looks like a boss bitch. And Edwan, as we can see, he's really cheerful. He's like a hype beast. And we also see Gustang. He's like kind of a psychopath. He says he's like aggressive and he gets irritated easily. Uh, yeah, so I guess that's where Tiara came from. That's a part of the personality Tiara got from him. And for Ari Han, he says that he doesn't really understand him because he is always alone. So that's interesting. I didn't know that Ari Han was like the person that was always alone. I thought it would be Trauma, right? Because Trauma is like emo and he like doesn't like being around people. But Ari Han seems to fill this role of being alone out of these family leaders. So the following scenes are telling us how the party went. So we see all these people like dancing, cheering, and just having a good time. And then Tramar also has his anima Haite that he gave to Karen, start like firing things up in the air and having a fireworks show and shit. And all these people are like, really happy. So at the very end, it's time for Tramar to propose to Emmy Yuz. And Enkidu already has the ring ready and he even gives him an ornament with the ring, like to make it more pretty. So as Tramar is about to get ready, all of a sudden, Amy Yu's gets on the stage and she says, I have an announcement to make. I hope it doesn't break the party though. So everyone here, everyone here is having a great time. Everyone here is celebrating. They're just, you know, it's just a great vibe. Everybody's having a great fucking time. And this Amy Yu's has this nasty ass shit in her head to tell everyone. And well, well, let me just continue back in the story because God damn it, Amy Yu's. God damn it. No, this is why we can't have nice things, because people like her fuck everything up. So Amy Yuz makes like a whole big speech. She says that, 
you know, it was an honor climbing the 10 great family leaders, or I guess the 13 great warriors, technically. And, um, but like, she will never be as good as them. But she just did not like complacency. And she wanted to choose defiance over complacency, because, I mean, she wants, she wants to continue climbing the tower. She wants to continue doing things, not just being complacent. And she decided to hold all this in until the very end when Traumarai's house is like finished being built and just tell everyone this, this stuff like at the worst timing possible. Like she couldn't, she couldn't have done this any, any time sooner and just not made a big deal about it. No, she had to make a whole speech and ruin everything pretty much. So she says that they changed and like it's not a particular change, but it is a noticeable change. Like if that makes any sense, like something about them has changed and she just does not like it anymore. She says she does not want to be part of this anymore and she doesn't want to, she does not want to be like part of the trauma race house. So she's fucking leaving and she was just, just playing with trauma, I guess, just, just playing around with them. I mean, she's asking him if he loves her and it's all, it's all a shit test. You know, it doesn't mean anything. It's just. That's what women do. They just do that. They, they do these mind games and this manipulation and this fake love stuff. And then they crush your heart at the very last minute because that's what they that's what they like to do. She also notes that she does not like how they view the people that don't agree with them as exiles, which I kind of agree. Like, I mean, they kind of demonized V and these other people that wanted to keep climbing, but they forced them to not keep climbing anymore. Like. Why did they make that decision for them? Like, I mean, that's kind of taking away their freedom, is it not? So, I mean, I can see your point with that. Like, first you take away V's and these other people's freedom that they want to keep climbing the tower, but then you demonize them and uh, put, cast them as exiles for not agreeing with you. I mean, that's kind of like a mob mentality, like a fucking hive mind mentality. That's some dumb shit. But yeah, I mean, I can get kind of behind what Amy was saying. I just don't like the way she executed it because I mean, Trauma is over here. He's actually like trying to be with her and then she just crushes his heart at the very last minute. And at the same time, it's kind of Trauma Rai's fault because there have been a lot of red flags. Like even Enkidu was telling him that, hey, there's he, she's texting people outside the mothership. So I guess, I guess it was outside the mothership. I thought it was outside the walls of the tower. Like I thought that's what it was, but no, it's actually the, the fucking mothership. So I, I didn't know that. And yeah, so it should have been known that she was gonna pull some shit like this sooner or later. And uh, I mean, the relationship was not good to begin with. Like she kept kind of like, like not, she wasn't really on board with Trauma, right? I mean, you could tell right away. If a bitch is not with you, just leave him. But yeah, I gotta say, Amy Hughes is a freaking savage, man. She just nonchalantly says all this stuff in Trauma Rai's party, in his mothership, in his own house, and She's got no filter here. She's just speaking how she she feels. And she doesn't care if Trauma Ryan gets upset. She doesn't care if she broke his heart. She doesn't care if she destroyed the party. She just said what was in her mind. And I mean, man, she, she does, Jesus Christ. She is not afraid or not, she doesn't give a shit pretty much. I mean, I guess because she's not in bad terms with all the other family leaders. So if Trauma Ryan acted out of anger or whatever, I mean, they, they wouldn't really like, you know, tolerate that. They wouldn't really uh, let him do whatever he wants, but I don't know. So it's, it's kind of like a ballsy move and kind of a bitchy move too. You're like, you're gonna say all this shit in my mothership and then you're gonna ruin my party and you think you can just get away with it? What the fuck? So yeah, the party is dead and Trauma Ride is just in his classic Trauma Ride pose where he has his knees up and he's just sitting on a chair looking down. And I mean, I guess that's why it's called Trauma Ride because a lot of stuff uh, happens to him and he's always traumatized so he's just sitting in his room all quiet all alone and Enkidu is trying to come in he's like trauma open up I, I, we can we can still stop her she can't leave like this and Gustang just like kind of stops him he's like move out of the way no matter what you tell him he's not gonna open the door and Enkidu I mean he's got no choice I mean he tries to kind of talk back to Gustang but I mean that's not really a good idea I mean what can he do to Gustang like I'm surprised Gustang actually took the time to like kind of talk to him. I thought he would just fucking flick him like a bug, but he didn't. And I mean, yeah, uh, 
Enkidu just leaves him. Uh, he leaves space for Gustain to pass through, and Gustain starts fucking kicking Traumarai's door down. And for the next few scenes, I mean, uh, Gustain's talking with him, and then Edwan is talking with him. Everybody but Enkidu is talking with Traumarai. So Enkidu takes this like to heart. Like he's really upset that he can't talk to Traumarai the way these guys talk to him. He can't. He doesn't stand on the same level as a friend as these guys do. So like I think Hannah or what's her her name her new name Leon Yi Rang or Yeon Lee Rang shit uh, it's a little tongue twister but anyway all these guys uh, they talk with Traumarai and Enkidu is over here thinking that man I think I want to become a family leader so I can stand next to Traumarai because he noticed that everything next to Traumarai is trivial because Traumarai is really superior. And only these specific 13 people, these 13 great warriors, stand on top of the tower. So Enkidu is kind of envious now. Enkidu, he's getting these really dark thoughts. And in one of these panels, you can actually see, like, this dark purple smoke or aura coming around Enkidu. So SLU is trying to build him up, like, as someone who's going to fuck shit up. And, I mean, that's going to happen sooner or later. Because if you remember in that one little flashback we saw... Uh, a while ago, maybe a few months ago, I forgot what chapter it was, uh, where Traumarai had his long hair, um, Enkidu did something, and this is building up Enkidu as doing some fucked up shit. So sooner or later, Enkidu is going to explode. So in the next scene, these guys are all having dinner, and Edwan is giving Traumarai the Chad talk. Edwan is like, well, it's not a big deal, dude. You just go meet a bunch of girls, and then if it doesn't work out, just fuck them. And then just move on to the next one. It's pretty much what, what Edwan is saying. And while this is happening, Gustain is just reading a book. He's not giving a shit. And then there's this guy, this like weird fucking dude, like in this corner of the table. And I thought he was like a servant. I thought he was like serving food. And I was like, why the fuck is this guy standing here? Don't they have enough food already? But it seems like this guy was one of the people like uh, that climbed a tower with them, I guess. We don't really know who this guy is, but uh, he's probably one of their tower born friends. And he brings up that Emmyuse looks like she wants to join the Grace people. So like uh, V, he wants to join. She wants to join V's corporation or his team. And uh, he says that if she joins them, does that mean they're no longer friends? And Gustang replies with, "Well, yeah, we're not friends anymore. Um, that's just how it's gonna be." And Edwan is asking Traumarai, like, "Hey, dude, what do you want to do if she does that?" And Traumarai responds with, "Well, I want to keep her captive." And to my surprise, these guys are totally okay with that. So I'm like, what the fuck? All right, I guess everyone's okay with that. So Edwan is like, well, you need to bring up memories, like the good times. And Charmer's like, memories? And then Gustang butts in. He's like, well, we as humans are squishy creatures after all. So I guess humans is referring to regulars at this point. And yeah, so now they're thinking about the good memories they had uh, and trauma is like well i remember what happened but i don't really feel it anymore and he asks his friends like hey do you guys remember those memories or those feelings and they say no they don't so it looks like well they said that they got rid of their memories since that incident so this incident that split apart v jihad and everyone else you know um, this caused some severe problems, and I guess part of not climbing a tower anymore meant that they had to dump their memories away. And I guess V didn't want to do that. V and his followers did not want to dump their memories away. And Jaha told them that they're going to be the ones ruling a tower, and Traumarai is taking this like a whole new level. So Traumarai is over here thinking that, hey, I'm going to be the ruler of the tower, so I'm going to take away other people's freedoms. And in this case, since Amuse does not want to be with him, he's going to force her to be with him. So this is no longer love, as the narrator is saying. This is like possession or being possessive. And Traumarai, I mean, this is a part, this is the start of Traumarai's villain arc. And I mean, I don't know. I kind of don't blame Traumarai because this girl kind of did fuck him up. And what she did was like came out of nowhere and it was uncalled for. Traumarai is listening to his daddy Jihad, what daddy Jihad tells him that, hey, boy, you're the ruler of tower now, so you can do whatever you want. And Trauma, I was like, yeah, man, you're right. I mean, I'm a family leader. That's what I'm gonna do. So I guess like everyone's on board with that. I mean, they don't care what Trauma does, which I mean, all right, I guess. Um, <laughs> uh, Gustang, Edwan don't have a problem with that. And yeah, I guess that's the end of that scene. So Trauma is gonna try to keep this girl with him forcibly. And I, I don't know. I don't know. Trauma doesn't seem like he's a Chad type like Edwan. Uh, he seems like he wants love, but. Uh, he did he did say though that he did want to control her he did want to change her way of thinking so I mean 
I guess this is t the way Traumar is. He's just gonna keep trying to control people and he's just gonna be possessive about things. Um, I think that's why uh, there is someone who mentioned that about when he was chasing Bomb, like he kept trying to get him, that like he was being possessive. So I guess it's just Traumar's personality. It's just who he is. So then we come to the next scene where Yeon and uh, what's her name, Amy Yu's, are talking and they're like kind of going down memory road. And Amy Yu's is talking about like how Traumar got a fish for her and like he sacrificed it to like give it to her to eat. And she said that she liked Traumar's serious face. And they cut back to the present. And Lee Rang is like, damn, what the fuck? You are attracted to that? You have really weird preferences. And she has like this weird face. So I guess Lee Rang, I, don't, I guess she doesn't like men or something. I, I don't know why she hates men. Is, this is the feminist, right? There was one of them that was a feminist. And I guess this one is the one. And Lee Rang was like, well, if you like him so much, then why are you leaving him? And I mean, she's over here, like just playing around with Amy Yu's, like babying her and she, then she brings up, Lee Rang brings up if Amy Yu is still in contact with that person. So, all right, of course, of course, women are not gonna condemn each other for cheating or doing anything like this. Uh, Lee Rang is over here just casually bringing this shit up. Uh, she knows that Amy Yu was texting other guys while Tramurai was sleeping in his palace or whatever, you know? And she responds by like stretching her arms out and like, she's all cocky. Like this girl does not feel bad for what she did. And she's like, yeah, you know, I was in Grace's team on the beginning. So all this time she had background feelings for uh, Grace or V and she was just here for trauma. I just like to pamper him, I guess. So, wow, <laughs> wow. She, this girl is fucking bad, dude. This girl is terrible. And then she just tells Lee Rang to her face that you guys are all becoming a burden. And you guys have like, uh, I don't like having limitations. And I want to just do whatever I want. And then she starts bringing up interesting things. She says, will there be a limitation for those born here? I've tried so hard to be close to trauma, but it just doesn't work. So I guess she's kind of envious that she's not an irregular. And she can't really like, you know, relate to these irregulars like... Uh, Lee Rang and Traumarai because I mean they're regulars. They got they're just born gifted and she will never have that that power or that body or that potential that they have. And then she kinda ends it saying, like, I think we were always different. And there's a little scene of her just standing like looking at Traumarai, Gustang on and Hannah or Lee Rang uh just talking like together and she's just alone from the distance. So I think this girl is like Rachel. Like Rachel is a reincarnation of this girl because Rachel is jealous of Bomb. She's jealous of Bomb's body, his potential, his status. And I think uh, Amy Hughes wants to be, she wants to have that weight of importance with her. And she can't, no matter what she does, she'll never have that status. She'll never be an irregular. She's always gonna be just another Towerborn that has these limitations placed on her and of course these irregulars are not going to feel the same way because they're they have like unlimited potential they're so strong they came from outside the tower and i think also amu wants to keep climbing the tower because eventually like the whole point of climbing the tower is getting what you want right is it wealth is it uh power uh like what do you want uh, the answers are at the top of the tower that's a head-on set and I think that's what these Towerborns want. They want to climb all the way to the top so they can, you know, fulfill their, their prophecy of the tower. They can fulfill their own uh, dreams. So I think she is very jealous of Traumarai, just who he is, just being irregular. And it, it just burns her ass that she will never be able to be on the same pedestal as Traumarai. She will always be inferior. And that's what Enkidu said, that everybody around Traumarai is inferior. And uh, yeah, I mean, she just has that deep resentment inside her and she can't do anything about it. So the least she could do is hurt him in a pitiful way by destroying his party and hurting his feelings. So the main takeaway from this is if a bitch does not fuck with you, just leave her. It's not even worth the effort or the suffering or whatever, man. Just cut your losses and get the fuck out. Because that bitch, if... She's got feelings for another dude, or if she already made up her mind and she's showing that she doesn't want to be with you, it's not even worth it, man. And this whole marriage thing, too. Like, Traumaire was about to propose to her and everything, and he just got shut down. Well, 
At least he didn't get shut down in front of everyone. I think he was behind her. Like, he was coming up from behind, and that was away from the whole, like, you know, the whole scene. So I don't think... I don't think he he got shut down in front of everyone. I don't know, but in case he did, uh, I mean, that's fucked up. I mean, I don't believe in fucking proposing, doing that classical movie shit where you ring your ring and you propose in front of everyone. And it's a lot of pressure, and it's not fair because you're putting up a lot of pressure for the other person, for the female, and if she just acts on a whim and says, no, I'm not going to marry you, guess what? You look like a fucking fool. And you got Edwan clowning you, calling you that you're a lover boy instead of a player, unlike him. And <laughs> you just get clowned on, man. It's just a lost loss. There's no benefit of doing this dumb shit. So yeah, I mean, Tramar is over here playing nice guy. He's giving her shelter. He's being nice to her. He has this party, like, thrown secretly for her. And he just gets shit on at the very end. So, I mean, yeah. I mean, it's expected. It's kind of his fault for not noticing these red flags. Like, these are huge red flags, Trauma, right? And she's been thinking of another guy all this time. And what's far more fucked up is this fucking Lee Rang, who you invited to your party, knows about this shit. And she doesn't tell you. She's over here, like, conspiring with fucking uh, Amy Hughes. Like, she knows what's going on, but she, <laughs> she just doesn't fucking tell you. Like, hey, you're being cheated on, or hey, you're being second fiddle. Hey, this girl doesn't really feel anything for you. Nope. Man, these guys are all fucked up. Fuck these guys, man. They all fucked Traumari up. So for the very last scene, we see someone, like in a jacket, sneaking in Traumari's ship. And as he is jumping around, all of a sudden, R.A. Han just slices the stairs or wherever he's... The, the, the platform he's, like, trying to jump across. And we see that it's Luzlek. And Luzlek, at this time, he's just called Luzlek uh, in his first name don't know how to fucking pronounce it but he doesn't have grace in his name yet so i think he adopted grace like after he just uh after like v died so i mean that's where luzlik adopted the name and luzlik is over here grinning he's grinning at Ray han and han is just giving him like this blank face and he doesn't really say anything so i guess luzlik is over here trying to rescue amy use because trauma is not going to let her go that freely or that easily and I guess his friends are kind of working with him. I don't really know what's going on. This is a confusing scene. But all I know is that Luzlik is here. And Ari Han is confronting him. And he already found out that he's there. So I don't know. Are these guys going to fight? Are they going to talk it out? Uh, psh, I don't fucking know. What does Luzlik want? What does Ari Han want? I, I don't know what these guys want. So yeah. I mean that's the end of the chapter. This was a pretty good chapter. I mean hey. These past three chapters. Great chapters. We needed this lore for a long time now. We've been starved with some Tower of God lore for a very long time. And we're finally getting it. So that is great. Uh, it's Amy Hughes. She's just like a Rachel. Rachel is probably a reincarnation of her. Because, I mean, she's a bitch. She's a freaking bitch. And Rachel did the same thing with Bomb. She's very jealous of Bomb. She's jealous that she will never be as good as him or as important as him. And Rachel wants to be a part of the stars and, like, be the center of attention. And I think Amy Hughes wants that, too. And she will never get it. They will never get it because they just weren't born with those capabilities or the status of an irregular. And this V guy, this V is kind of sounding like a Chad as well. I mean, it looks like he's going to bag down this Amy Hughes chick pretty soon. And, uh, I mean, he's going to eventually bag down Arlene, too. So... Damn, this guy, this V, uh, he might be even more of a Chad than this fucking Edwan. Damn, bro, that's hard to believe. So yeah, guys, that's the end of this chapter and this review. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you think if MU's is truly a fucked up person. Um, uh, trauma ride, did he deserve that? The trauma ride deserve that pain? Did he deserve that extra trauma? Um, is Edwan a Chad? I mean, Edwan, I mean, should trauma just follow Edwan's advice and just fuck girls and whatever uh well let me know what you guys think in the comments below and i will see you in the next review